All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, today, I'm going to paint the Vindicare Assassin, the new sculpt from 40K. No idea how I'm supposed to paint this guy. I looked at him briefly on the website to make sure I spelled his name right, but otherwise, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with the flow and whatever happens, happens. So I'm gonna start with his bodysuit thing. I'm gonna do that in Black Templar. Should be a pretty straightforward paint job, I think. Should, uh... He's got a black bodysuit on, and then some... Some bits and bobs here and there. Other than that... Should be about it. I'm gonna be... Pretty careful with this guy. I'd like to do it all in contrast paint. Without ever having to go back over anything. So I'm going to attempt to be very careful. We'll see how well that goes. But I'm going to try. I think, if I remember correctly, the straps are all in like a dark brown sort of color, so maybe I'll replicate that also. But, uh, don't remember exactly. I have recently such a propensity towards using gore grunt of fur that I may end up using that on these straps, but I'm not sure that would really... You wouldn't think there'd be any even hues of red on him or any bright color like that because he needs to be stealthy. And red is not a stealthy color. But we might just go for rule of cool. We'll see. We shall see. He does have quite the tassel on the end of his sword here, so that might be a good opportunity even though it wouldn't make sense to give him some color. Which I don't think is the worst thing in the world. Not everything has to be painted ultra realistically. trying to avoid these straps in here so I don't want to go back over with the primer. There's a little bit of a hair or something that got caught in the primer though. I'm just going to grab that out of there. There we go. That happens sometimes if the wind is blowing when you prime or if you have pets and who knows. Not the end of the world, though. Hmm. 
I think I'm actually going to do his gloves in the same color as his bodysuit here. There's a couple details on it that I'll go back and paint, but the undercoat of these gloves can be black. Okay. Almost done with the bodysuit here. Looking at a couple of pieces on this guy makes me want to go the exact opposite route of what I've been talking about, him being stealthy, and just make him, like, ultra flashy. So I might do that. Just because it looks like there's a lot of opportunity for some gold filigree and stuff on him that could look pretty cool. Paint faster. Wow. His base coat is actually going pretty slow, so... It's probably a good call. Just gonna get the, his chest in here. Good. And then his face. I think I'm not sure about his mask yet. So I'm just going to paint the part that looks like it's part of the bodysuit. And I'll come back to the face later. Looks like he's ready to go snorkeling, to be honest. Which, you know, maybe he is, actually. Shooting from underwater might be a really good way to conceal your position. Assuming you had the bullets that could go keep their velocity up while traveling through water. Which, in the 41st millennium, I'm sure exists. Maybe you just strap a couple fins to the sides of the rounds and that's all it takes. Maybe that's the secret. Deployable, obviously, because you still have to fit through the chamber, but, you know. Alright, so there's the bodysuit. Done. I'm just going to do the rock behind him while I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm going to use Basilicum Gray for this. I'm just going to slather it on there. And I'm going to get the rock under his feet also while I do this.
And I think I'm going to do him in like a... Like just a little diorama sort of way. So I'm going to just paint the sculpted base here and paint the rest of the base black. And leave it like that. Not as a gaming piece. If it was going to be a gaming piece, I'd paint the rest of the base to match the terrain here. But I think it's just a little shelf piece. I'll, uh, I'll do it that way. This Basilicum Gray is such a good color. Black Templar is not bad, but... Basilicum Gray is just... It just does what it's supposed to do so well. Alright, I think that's it for that rock. Yep. Oh, just a couple little touch-ups. Alright. So then I'm going to do all the leather and stuff that's on him, and I'm going to do that in Wildwood. Nice medium brown contrast paint. If the camera would ever accept it. I'm going to try to stay off the black as much as possible here, but if I do get a little bit on there, it won't be the end of the world. It'll just look like shadows in the crevices. Well, now that I look at it, that's actually the stock of the gun, but that's okay. Not sure what color I'm going to do that in yet, but... Actually, maybe I'll do the gun in brown. Just as a little, like... You know, maybe he's using an old-timey rifle. I guess it would be real old-timey in this... In the 41st Millennium. That grenade right there, that's going to get a very specific color, which some of you may be able to guess. It's kind of my my go-to. Oh, that's a wacky thing. Let's paint it that color. color. So, if you happen to guess what color that is going to be, then you're a winner. I don't know what you win, but you're a winner. I'm going to paint this whole pack in brown. Then I'll come back and do the, the buttons and stuff in a different color. Alright, and I think I am going to do the whole rifle in brown, and then I'm going to come back and get a couple details 
in a different color. But for now, it's going to be brown. It's not. I'm not sure what it's not is referring to at this point. I missed when it was in the chat. But regardless, I'll just keep painting along here and maybe that'll come back in a minute or two. The more I look at it, the more I actually like this rifle in this brown color. Maybe do some some bronze or brass highlights on it. Not highlights, but like pick out the details in brass or bronze. See how that looks. Alright, is that... Nope, got a little bit up here. And a little bit down here. Oh, and the scabbard, that's right. Alright, that's all the brown done. I think I'm going to go to the... I think I'll paint a couple details in on the wall behind him. I'm going to do that with my go-to gold. If it'll focus. Necro Gold from Scale 75. So we got this Aquila, just going to do that in gold. And then this little decorative piece in the wall here. side of the Aquila. Oh, I noticed a spot of brown that I missed. The bottom of the scabbard. Or the bottom of the holster, rather. Jeez. I'll fix that in a minute. Alright, so that's the gold on the wall. Nothing else gold on the base? Nope. Okay. 
So I'll fix that little spot of brown real quick with some wildwood. And there's another little spot right in there. Couple actually. All right. Now I think I'll paint in the metal parts on him, and I'm going to use Iron Warriors for that. All the metal that's on him, not including the gun, I should say. And I'm also going to do the couple little bits of rebar or whatever that are sticking out of the the wall. Oh, there's some more gold to do on him. So I'll do that in just a second also. I'm just jumping all around today. Just get the little the bullets he has on his shoulder. And he just did the ones on his hip. Guess this is more bicep than shoulder, but you know, whatever. Close enough. We can get these buttons that are on him. And then his mask here. I think I'm gonna well yeah I was gonna paint this hose in a different color but I think I'm just gonna paint it in this silver And I also decided I'm going to paint the the rebar in the brass color, and then I'll weather them. I think I'll do it that way. Paint the scab or the uh, the handle of the sword, or the knife, whatever it might be. Alright, is that... I think that's everything that I need to be in this color. No, I changed my mind again. I'm going to paint the, the rebar in this silver color. kind of hard sometimes painting silver over white primer because it it's hard to tell if something is just shiny because it's silver or if it's the white at least for me it's hard to tell sometimes all right so then i'm going to do the brass on his gun i'm going to use brass scorpion for that brass scorpion So, like, I'm just going to do the, all the little details, basically, in this color. I'm going to leave this skull to be gold, 
and the Aquila to be gold. <clears throat> but otherwise... All right, that looks good. And I'm just gonna take my Black Templar again. And I'm just gonna black out a couple spots on the gun, just for visual interest. So I'm gonna do the suppressor up here. And it won't change to completely black, it'll just, you might still be able to see a couple of the brown lines showing through, but It'll just look a little different. I'm going to paint the magazine in this color also. There we go. And then this little box on top, whatever it might be. sitting where the adjustment screws would normally be, but he doesn't seem to have those, so I don't know. He just points his scope at things and it's automatically zeroed, I guess. Which would be pretty awesome to have. Which I guess, you know, with like AI and stuff in the 41st millennium, maybe that is how it works. Maybe it just does it. It figures it out and he doesn't have to. All right, so now I'm going to do the couple bits of gold that are on him, still with this necro gold. So he's got some skulls in a couple places. actually got skulls in a lot of places now that I look at it. And just get the Aquila. Check for more skulls. I think that's all of them. Oh, the Aquila on the back side of the gun here. Okay, excellent. All right, so then we have that tassel. I'm gonna do that in a dark blue color, I think. If I can find my dark blue. Here we go, Leviathan blue. That'll give it some color, but it won't be overpowering. go. Oh, there's just a little spot in here. That's better. Alright, so then we have that grenade on his back. First, I'm going to do the eye lenses. and I'm going to do those in Flesh Terror Red. They're already silver, and a pretty dark silver at that, so they'll have a more of a tint of red, more than actually being red, assuming I don't put this on too thick. There we go. So there are they are red, but they're not like over white red. They're much more muted. 
I'm going to put just a little dot in the upper corners of those lenses with some Troll Slayer orange. Just a tiny, tiny dot. go and then in the other one there we go just two little orange dots in there just to give it a little more pizzazz I suppose you'd say And then there's a couple bones on the base, so I will paint those. I'm going to use Rackarth Flush for this. It's my favorite go-to bone color recently. And then I'll come back and go over that with uh, contrast paint. I think this is a bone sticking out. might actually be a rock, but now it's a bone. And yeah, that's a skull right there. Okay. I think that's all the bones. Yep. Just gonna. There we go. Alrighty. Then I'm gonna take some Steel Legion Drab and I'm just gonna. Maybe, there we go. And just edge highlight a couple spots on the gun. Nothing crazy, just to bump the contrast up a little bit. Their brush had a little too much water on it there, but we can just pick those back up. There we go. And then I'm just going to do one along the barrel here. There we go. Alright, and then I'm going to take some Skaven Blight Dinge, if the camera will accept that, yes, and just going to highlight a little bit of the black with this, so just right here, and then up at the suppressor. And then along the magazine. And then these things on his hands, I'm going to do them in this color. I'm not sure if they're like exoskeleton things to help him climb better or something. Or if they're just decoration, I'm not really sure. But I'm going to do them there. And then the he doesn't have a lot of separation, it's just a whole bodysuit, but on the separation between his gloves and his bodysuit, I'm going to highlight that. Alright, then I'm going to take a brighter silver than what I started with. So in this case, that'll be Iron Breaker. I'm just going to do some spot highlights on the metal. Go. 
and I think, oh yeah, I'll do this on the gold over here also. Just like the light is catching some of the spots of gold here. Oh, and I'm going to do the dirt under his feet. And then I'm going to blue the metal a little bit. Um, some metal can sort of have a bluish tint to it. I'm using Gorgrunter fur uh, for the dirt, by the way, that color I talked about earlier. Um, some metal can sort of have a bluish tint to it. And I think I want my dirt, or my, my dirt, my metal to have that tint. Gotta get in the rocks here. Not too concerned about clipping any of the rocks because of the last step I'm gonna do on these will hide a lot of that. Alright. So then I'm gonna blue the metal. I'm gonna do that by using this Griff Charger Gray contrast paint. It sort of has a bluish tint to it. So I'm just going to put that on the middle on his mask. Just very, very lightly. I don't want the mask to read as blue. I want it to read as silver. But, just to have a slight tint to it at certain angles. There we go. So you may not even be able to see that on stream really, but his mask is now slightly bluer. So it'll read a little differently. So then I'm going to put some skeleton horde contrast over the skulls on the base. It mixes with the red earth that's not the end of the world. Alright, then I'm just going to take some... I think I'll just use the same Troll Slayer Orange I used earlier. And I'll just get some of this on my brush like a dry brush. And then I'm just going to pick out these, these bits of rebar here like they've rusted. Have a little bit of corrosion on them. Rust really should have multiple colors in it, but I'm gonna do something in a minute to this that we won't really see much of this anyway. But if some of it happens to poke out, you'll uh, you'll see like a flash of orange, and you'll probably understand that it's rusty. We'll see. Alright, so then I just have this grenade back here, and I'm going to do that in my go-to color for weird things, Tesseract Glow. Give that a good shake, because it likes to separate. And I can't remember in the rules what grenade type he has, but it's some wacky grenade thing. Like a rad grenade or something, so. It's fluorescent green like this makes sense to me. Even though it might not be the stealthiest thing in the world. But that's okay. Alrighty, so he's just about done. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make him be hanging out in the snow. So I'm just going to take some of this Valhalla and Blizzard stuff. If I have any left in here. Yeah, 
I have some. I could open a new pot, but it's okay. So then I'm just going to dot some up here on top of his, on top of the little tower next to him. And then some would have gotten in the cracks here. And then in that, on that little, little ledge right here. There we go. And then some would be up here, not a ton, but some would definitely collect up there and then on the ground itself obviously get a different pot of it here just so we have some varying textures get some more texture up there there we go. And then there's another wedge back here, so I'll put some in there. That looks good. And then I'm just going to kind of trail it up this crevice here, like the wind blew it on there or something. We'll lay some more down there. Alright, that looks about good for what we're going for. Just tidy up that crevice a little bit. There we go. Alright, so then I'm just going to rinse my brush off and clean off everything that isn't on his little scenic base here. So we don't want to be painting the base color over this snow. I might try, maybe I'll just dot a couple little snowflakes up on his head. Nothing major, just and maybe on his shoulder. There wouldn't be a ton of snow collecting on him. But a couple snowflakes here and there can't hurt. Maybe he's been standing still for a long time. waiting for his prey so we'll just do that and then just clean it up a little bit that's probably okay all right and then just double check our base here looks good all right so then we'll get abaddon black which i am almost out of but not quite got just enough left I'm just going to paint in everything that isn't his scenic base. Okay. This is going to be tricky because he's got wet snow on him. I think I'm going to hold him by his gun here and paint the base rim.
All right, and there he is done. You just find something to sit him on. That'll work. And then get some, get an actual view of him. Let's see if I can make this work. close. There we go. So there he is in all his snowy glory. Just give him a good spin. See him from all angles. the most high-tech spinning device you'll ever see for a miniature. But yeah, there you go. Uh, so that'll do it for this episode. Um, I will be back next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as per usual, for episodes 46, 47, no, 47, 48, 49. And then the following Monday will be episode 50. Woohoo! Made it to 50. At least I hope. But thank you everybody for watching. And I will see you guys next time.